cheaper than our producer's underage sister. Edgier than the stuff shown on late night television. Newer than Kim Kardashian's ex. Live from Orlando, it's Crazy Train Radio. Cheaper than our producer's underage sister. Edgier than the stuff shown on late night television. Newer than Kim Kardashian's ex. Live from Orlando, it's Crazy Train Radio. This is Larry Zerner from Friday the 13th Part 3, and you're listening to Crazy Train Radio. I know you deal with trademarks and, as you said, and 
there's so many little details that you deal with within that field. Yeah. How how difficult is it? Yeah, how difficult would you compare it to like whether you're dealing with criminal and you know all the just regular lawsuits? Because there's like I said, so many areas that you cover within the legal uh, system itself. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in like all of these things, it's not so much that they're difficult because if you after you do it a while, you know, you sort of learn what's going on. So it's it's about getting the experience to to learn how to handle these sorts of cases. I'm I I I'm happy I don't do criminal mostly because I don't want to, you know, have someone's life literally in my hands, you know, like you lose and, you know, they they go to jail for, you know, their life is ruined. So that's a lot of responsibility uh that I don't want. And um uh you know, but it the copyright uh, entertainment law requires a lot of different fields because you're you're dealing with copyright, you're dealing with contracts, you're dealing with trademarks, you're dealing with right of publicity. The 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 clients are, are for the most part really interesting people and I I find it really fascinating and uh I I love going to work every day. I have my own firm and so I really pick my clients and who I who I will uh represent which keeps it uh, keeps it nice for me. Well Speaking of which, obviously, as I mentioned in the intro there, most people know you from, uh, you know, a couple projects that you did, most notably yeah. Shelley and Friday the 13th Part 3. Right. Uh, did getting into the legal side of things, becoming a lawyer, did it help you saying, I want to go into entertainment lawyer, or being an entertainment lawyer with having a background of being in the entertainment field as a talent? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, when I left uh, – acting and wanted to go into law, I knew I wanted to do entertainment law. That was really the only thing I wanted to do, and I was fortunate enough to be able to find a job in the entertainment law field and, and study from, learn from some really great guys um, who taught me a lot before I went on my own. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, 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 his, the, the my past really uh, does uh, help me because I know what uh, – what actors go through, what writers go through, you know, what film production is is like, and that is it comes into uh, it's necessary every day. I mean, I had a case involved. One of my uh, early cases on my own was uh, a case involving the movie Darkness Falls and the copyrightability of a uh, of a horror movie character. Um, and so, really, the the my experience on Friday the Thirteenth and my knowledge of horror movies uh, was extremely helpful. And I, uh, because you know, I understood what a horror you know what a horror movie character was and how that's set up. And you know, like Jason or Freddy or Michael Myers. And I remember talking to the lawyer for the uh, the defendants, uh, and she was telling me, oh, she had to watch, you know, The Exorcist and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and she had to watch all these horror movies that she had never seen, because she didn't know anything about horror movies, you know, she was, so she had to sort of learn it, and that's not a way, you, you, you know, to get a handle on those kind of cases, you have to sort of, ha- you know, you, you, you have to know and love the film so you, so you know what's going on. Yeah, it's one of those things you either know it or you don't kind of thing. Right. You're right. It takes a lifetime to learn. It's like, it's not just like, like if you're doing something about the Beatles, you go, well, I'll just listen to all the albums. It's like, well, that's not how it works, right? You sort of have to, like, have them in your DNA, right? You've heard every album a million times, right? That you can't just do, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of, uh, obviously, th- Friday the 13th, uh, as Shelley, try to look the most that, and obviously, we first met you and started talking to you uh, around the time you appeared at Monster Mania in Cherry Hill. Yeah. And obviously, those, that fan base would know you were probably best known for bringing the mask that Jason wore in subsequent films uh, into play. Uh, what is that like for you, you know, 25 years later or so here? Or almost actually 30 now that I think about it. 30, 31. Uh, be, 31. Yeah, to be uh, known for such a. Uh, iconic item for an iconic uh, horror figure as Jason? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I didn't have much of an acting career, and, uh, you know, although I wanted to be an actor, you know, badly, it, you know, just didn't work out, and I, certainly I had a lot of friends who, 
who were actors with me and who similarly didn't really have careers and left, you know, to do other things. But, you know, at least I have this. You know, I can tell every, you know, the people say, what did you do as an actor? Uh, well, I gave Jason his hockey mask, and, and everyone understands what that means and who that is and 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 what my place in pop culture uh, is. And that's that's kind of cool, as opposed to just saying, well, I had, a, you know, a, two lines in a Wesley Snipes movie, you know, I mean. That's great, too, but it's nice to be able to tell people and people understand what I did, and people still think it's cool. I know, you know, when I meet people or – actually, when I meet people and I'm with friends, my friends always say, Larry was in Friday 13, so they always get a kick out of telling people that about me. I don't usually put it out there, first thing. Well, was there ever a time, like time frame, that you're, whether you were back in school to become a lawyer or anything in your personal life that you – Kind of cringe going, oh, man, it's now. Like, almost like it was embarrassing to say, hey, I did this, or. No, I, I, I was never embarrassed by the, no, I was never embarrassed by it. It was always fun and cool. I mean, it just, it was, you know, it was like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, because now, we, actors and all, or athletes that we've talked to on air and off, that always have told us, and they've been like, there's the times we love, a lot of the stuff we did, and there's 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 those moments too that people you know you cringe going oh damn what you know what was I thinking or hey I was just going for the paycheck or whatever the case may be. You yeah, know, I don't have any paycheck parts because my 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 part my my career was not long enough to have that happen. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, the paychecks with a law firm now. So, <laughs> but uh, you know what the most interesting part was? Uh, what can you tell us about a? Uh, who wants to be a millionaire, even though you didn't make the uh, hot seat for that uh, competition? Uh, what was that whole experience with Regis as a show there? The, you know, that, I was so obsessed. I don't know if people know or, or remember, but when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire first came on the air, they didn't really have an audition process. They, they didn't have an audition process. They literally had every day, they had a, they had a phone number you called up, and they would ask you three questions where you had to put something in order, uh, like put these states in order from west to east, and they'd give you one, California, two, you know, Nevada, three, Kansas, four, New York. Well, they, but they do it out of order. And then you had to push, you know, one, two, three, four. You know, so that, that was – and then they get harder. So, you, And then if you got all three questions right, you got in a random pool to then get a, another call to, to, on another day to answer five questions right. And then if you got all five questions right, on that other day, you got in another random pool to come to New York and be on the show. And that's how they picked people. They didn't look at you. They didn't know your name. They didn't know anything about you except you got those questions right. And I did, I think, every day for a year and a half, I took that little test. And finally, <laughs> I, got the, I got through and I got the, 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 the call to come to New York. And uh, so that was so uh, – that was fun. It was, uh, it was just like, it was just, uh, we, you know, you, you, I think we left on a Tuesday, shot on Wednesday, and left on Thursday. It was, you know, it was a very quick trip to New York, but it was, uh, it was super fun uh, just to, to try. And I was, uh, the thing was, and the, the, the fastest thing of the question was about um, put these movies in order, and I was, I had it right, and I was 16 hundredths of a second off the pace. Um uh, so I didn't, I didn't get in the hot seat, but at the end of the day, that turned out to be a good thing because it led to another game show later, which I wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, had which is I'd been one in. versus one hundred there. <laughs> right. right. But now, speak, before we get into one versus one hundred there, but between the two shows, obviously, are you a guy that you know, on your downtime likes to sit home and watch game shows or reality shows, or are you a TV guy? I'm a, I'm a TV guy. I don't really watch game shows. I just know a lot about pop culture. And okay, so that's, well, I was that's really say, my uh, or ask you, what's that like, yeah, that's one thing to be able to, you hear people say it all the time, it's one thing to, when you're home on your couch drinking a beer or what, whatever the case is, it's one thing when you're at home, you know, oh, that's this, that's to answer stuff, whether it's Jeopardy, Millionaire, whatever the show may be, but when you're actually there, you know, trying to, you know, compete, you know, what the difference was, like, did you feel the pressure? It's it yeah. There's I mean on, on on millionaire. I just remember like you do it and then my heart 
beat. I still remember, like, hearing my heart beat. Like, my beat, my heart was going to, like, fall out of my chest as I waited to see if I was going to go in the hot seat. And then I didn't. So then that was it. Then I didn't. <laughs> then, <laughs> then that was it. So then that was the end of that. So, but, uh, uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's pressure. You got to get, you know, you got to get through it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about uh, one versus 100? You actually were part of the last man standing episode. Yeah. And uh, from the notes we read, you won uh, $250,000. Right. Uh, was that for charity or was that uh, personal? Uh, no, 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 no. So th- this was another where uh, one of us 100, I don't know if people remember the show. It, it had a weird, it was kind of a weird thing. There was a person who was the one and then there was uh, the mob of 100 and they'd ask a question of the mob and the one, and then the 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 one would get money for every mob member who who got it wrong. So uh, the the way the show was supposed to be was if so if ten people got the you asked a question and ten people got it wrong, the, the mob member would get the the one would get ten thousand dollars. And then the next level it's two two thousand a question. So then another ten people get it wrong. So now the 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 one gets another twenty. So now he's got thirty thousand, and that would keep going until either the until the guy stopped or he got everyone out but the the catch was if the one got it wrong um the mo- the remaining mob members would split the money that was left so if there's a hundred thousand dollars in the pot and ten mob members and the one got it wrong then each of the mob members would get ten thousand dollars and i went there and this is a show where they they literally needed 200 people an episode to be mob members because that's how many that's how that's how it works so they need a lot of people and and I know I'm not your typical game show contestant because they don't usually pick entertainment lawyers but I, I went down for that and and uh, and I thought I well I said I'm not going to be the one but I'll be in the mob and if I get it right uh, you know I'll get ten thousand dollars which is not bad for a day's work. And and the way it worked is that also if you as long as you got it right you got to be on the next show, and continue so you could you could you could win a few and there were people winning like fifty grand by staying on week after uh, week after week, so I went and I auditioned and a few weeks later they said okay come down and be in the mob and I was in the mob and got them all right but the 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 person took the money and then they said okay you can come back for the next show in a couple of weeks. And then, then they told me, oh, but this next show, we're going to change the format to The Last Man Standing. It'll just be 100 people, and the winner will get $250,000, and do you want to be in that one? You don't have to be. They said, you can go back to the regular show. And I said, no, no, I like that. That's good, because I can win a lot of money. And I figured I had a pretty good shot. I knew I was pretty good at this stuff. And then when I get to the filming on the, on the day of the filming, you know, and I, I thought I'm just against random people, and then they show up. And then it's Ken Jennings, the Jeopardy champion, and Brad Rutter, who is actually the guy who beat Ken Jennings on Super Jeopardy. He's actually the all-time money winner, Brad Brad Rutter. And then they had two millionaire winners. They had six College Bowl champions. They had they had just a whole bunch of game show winners on that episode, and and so I'm just filler. I'm there. Like I'm just there to fill out the mob. They don't. I'm not. They don't consider me in contention at all. Um, and uh, uh, and I was next. I happened to be put next to Ken Jennings in uh, in the in the thing, which was kind of cool because it, it, although the show is it's only about 40 minutes of time, it took like four or five hours of filming. And so there's a lot of time to talk to Ken, which was kind of cool. He was he was really nice. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I ended up, uh, uh, beating everyone. Not because I, th- th- so in this show, they changed the format. It was, it was last man standing. They were just going to go until no one was left, uh, until one person was left and that person would get all the money. And so you had, so to win, I had to beat Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter and Annie Duke and all the other people. And, and turns out I did. I mean, I, they asked me, they asked the one question that, that I knew that Ken Jennings did not know, which was who had been married the most number of times, Larry King or King Henry VIII. And that was the. And who was that? It, it was it was Larry King. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so that was 
that was the uh, that was the right answer. And and at that there were there were there were five of us left at that point, and the other four all went with uh, King Henry VIII. And for some reason, I had I just remembered reading that Larry King had been married seven times, and I knew that was I, I put that down, and and that was the right answer, and that got me you know that knowing that got me you know quarter million dollars. So it was a good day. <laughs> good day in the office, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, with that 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 one versus one hundred, because obviously not many people are familiar with it. Like you said, unless you watch like the game show network and all now and see it right. in reruns. That was the show that was uh hosted by Bob Saget, correct? Yes, Bob Saget. Right. Did you did you have a lot of uh, interaction with Bob there? Or? No, no, because like I said, I'm just one of the mob until the end when I won. They didn't, they didn't, they weren't focused on me. They didn't, they weren't thinking about me. They thought it was, they were sure Ken Jennings was going to win. I think they were, you know, they were, or Annie Duke. Uh, they thought it would be, and they were down to, it was in the final five. It was Ken and Annie and me and two other people. And we were just there to fill it out. They, I don't think they, that, they thought at all that I would win. <laughs> so who's this guy coming out of the left field, so to say? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But you know, it is. You know, with these game show rules, you got it. You know, they got to be honest about it. I won, so they had to give me the money. Yeah, ever since that uh, scandal back in the fifties, I believe it was with games. Yeah, shows right. And TV right. So this coming yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Larry, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out. Uh, if, if people are in, who are listening happen to be in the entertainment field and may have an issue again, uh, what's the best way to contact your office? Uh, we just go to my website, zernerlaw.com, Google me, Larry Zerner, uh, email me, Larry at zernerlaw.com, follow me at zernerlaw uh, on Twitter, uh, so yeah, I'm easy to find. If you know my name, Z-E-R-N-E-R, -E you can you can find me. Exactly. Uh, do you have any more, because uh, like I said earlier in the interview, uh, before we let you go, we, we uh, first met you and started talking to you when you were making the appearance in Cherry Hill. Do you have anything coming up? I do. I'm going to be uh, I'm scheduled to go to Mad Monster, uh, Mad Monster Party Gras, Mad Monster Party in, in New Orleans on uh, Friday, uh, September 13th. Um, oh. So that well, seems like yeah, a fantastic time. You can Google that info that show down in New Orleans. You know, you Google that too, and uh, I'm sure it's called, yeah, it's called Mad, Mad well. Monster, Mad Monster Party, and uh, yeah, I think, and I know Derek Mears, uh, Jason from the remake, is will also be there. He's a great guy. Yes. Larry, thank you for taking a few minutes.